Hello and welcome to another episode of Project Supercar. This is the channel where I've built my own supercar using an old Audi as a donor car. And this is the prototype behind me. And on this episode we're going to be covering dashboards. So here's a question for you. What came first? Was it the dashboard or the car? It may surprise you that the dashboard came before the car. Now you see, before the car was invented, we had the horse and cart. People would put boards on the front of their cart so that road grit and such stuff like that wouldn't be dashed up into the people riding in the cart. Over time, as the internal combustion engine was being fitted to carts, and therefore you didn't need the horse anymore, gauges were fitted into the dashboard of the cart to monitor the engine. Over time, this morphed into the dashboard that we know today, with all your conveniences like satellite navigation and USB and audio systems. So the dashboard evolved over time. It originally was just a wooden board, then a few gauges were added, and then the board moved a little bit into the cabin area, and for the first time we began to see metal bulkheads that protected the occupants from the engine that was usually in the front of the car. So the dashboard became almost a metal bulkhead. And then the first sort of padding was seen in the evolution of the dashboard somewhere around the 50s and 60s and then well into the 70s. So let's just take a look at a typical car that was built in the 60s. All right, this week we're back on the Camaro. We're going to be starting to pull the dash pad out of this car. Now this dash pad that's in this 70 Camaro is hideous. It's bad. It's got waves across top of it. It doesn't look real good. Luckily, the panel behind it seems to be in pretty decent shape. Let that hang on the cables. All right, now what we've got going on is the dash panel over on this side is stuck into that corner. Use Cam's method to get this off. All right, one more. Okay, that's it. In theory. <laughs> oh! So weird that we do that at the same time. Maximum effort. <laughs> All right, I got my dash pad here, and I want to go over a couple little detail items on the dash panel itself. Um, what we've got going on here is on the driver's side where the instrument cluster is, there are two screws, one that goes in here and one that goes in here to hold this end of the dash pad in place. And the screws are completely missing from the car and we didn't get a dash pad install kit, at least for that portion of it. So when I put this in, I'm not going to be able to actually set that side of the dash pad. I'm gonna try to do this by myself. It's a little bit sticky as a one man job. So there it is, dash panel installed. Hi people. Okay, I think what I'll do is I will pull this dashboard out and then we can take a better look at the bulkhead and the chassis and then I can go over some of the details with you. Now, if you've been following along, and you've been watching the um, new donor car being stripped down, then you'll remember that I pointed out the location for the fuse box. And it's the same on this dashboard. 
Insert here. And there it is. And I can't tell you the amount of measuring and jigs and time it took to get this entire car to fit together with this dashboard, to line up with this, to line up with the door, to line up with the chassis. Nightmare. So we'll go over that now. Well, after I've pulled the dash out, that is. Okay, dashboard is out. Don't worry too much about all this. We'll go into this um, probably in another episode. Now, I probably time lapsed all that and it took me an hour. Time for a cup of tea. dashboard from the Audi A6 C4. Now there's many reasons why I decided to use the dashboard from the donor car. One of them is cost. Because if you're going to build your own DIY supercar, kit car, whatever, then you're going to need an engine and a gearbox and usually it's far cheaper to buy an entire car as a donor car, take the engine and gearbox from that and fit it in your kit car. Well, you've got a whole load of other bits and pieces in that car, so why not use them? And these are things like the blower unit, switch gear, loom, ECU, dashboard, and it's all free stuff, so you might as well use it. Now, there's another thing you have to consider, or many things you have to consider, when you're trying to design your own dashboard for a kit car, especially in the UK, because it has to pass an IVA test. Now, I don't want to go into every single detail or regulation or rule or whatever because this video would go on and on for hours. But just say that there's a large amount of regulations that you have to pass before your car is allowed on the road. So you might as well use a dashboard that's already passed the test. Now, I read a story once that Ford spent $50 million on developing the dashboard for the Ford Fiesta. Whether or not that's true, I do know that OEM manufacturers do spend millions on things like this, so why not use them? Now I know that your supercar is supposed to be unique, it's supposed to be exotic, that sort of stuff, and maybe using a dashboard from a family saloon might not work for you, that's fair, that's fair enough. But I do tend to dress this up anyway. The idea is you could cover it in leather, you could put some uh, carbon fiber on it, that sort of stuff, and then the rest of the interior is gonna be bespoke anyway. So 
I don't really see the problem in using a dashboard from another car, especially when you're on a tight budget like I am. So let's talk about the extra three bits and pieces that you get with a dashboard. Now if you want heating and air conditioning in your car, then you're going to need vents, just like this, and all the hose work to send the hot air, cold air to the vents. Well if I turn this around, we can take a look at the OEM ducting. Right, hopefully you can see that. There is a whole load of plastic ducting behind the dashboard. It's already pot riveted in and like I say, it's free. You might as well use it. And if you want to use a modern car as your donut vehicle, you will find that modern manufacturing processes means that most of the parts of the dashboard is now bolted to the dashboard. It's no longer a covering. So you'll find that air units, air conditioning units, that sort of stuff, venting, glove boxes, even steering columns, they're actually bolted to the dashboard and then the whole dashboard is inserted into the car. A car's dashboard is full of dials and gauges that keep the driver up to speed on everything. In the time of the horse and buggy, a dashboard was a wooden panel for shielding the driver from mud and water. Hence the word dash, which can mean bespatter or splash. When motorised vehicles came along, instruments were added, making the dashboard an important source of information. Today's dashboards tell the driver a lot at a glance. Ignore the dials and you could run out of fuel or be slapped with a speeding ticket. A dashboard for a luxury sports car starts with this aluminium skeleton. It's been bonded at the joints with adhesive that's stronger than conventional welds. A technician clips the main electrical harness to the aluminium frame. He then fixes the heating and air conditioning unit to the centre of the dashboard skeleton and connects it to the wiring. Working from the back, the technician installs a glove box and a network of ducts for the heating and cooling system. The substructure is now ready to join the wired aluminium frame. He rivets the assembly to the metal structure. He slots the driver's information module, which includes the speedo, into the housing. Next up is the steering column, with its magnesium shifting paddles and wiper controls already attached. He slides it into place just under the information module. He inserts the centre stack, which contains the radio, other audio equipment and temperature control mechanisms. More leather adds a luxurious look, smell and feel to the cabin. He inserts vents for air conditioning and heating above the gear shift controls, again sliding them into place through the back of the unit. He makes all the right connections and installs the gadget-filled fascia just over the centre stack. Next, a technician downloads computer software for all of the equipment in the dashboard. He configures the electronics to the appropriate settings. He then tests each component, confirming that every instrument and control works perfectly. The dashboard is now complete and awaits installation. So over time, the heater matrix, the blower unit, which was once inside the engine compartment, sort of moved its way through the bulkhead and is now inside the car with the occupants and it's bolted to the dashboard. Now this means that the whole dashboard is extremely heavy and it's not something that you can easily put in and out on your own. In fact, in manufacturing, they use cranes.
Yes, it's me from the future and yes, I've made this video too long again. So I went way over 25 minutes, so I think the best thing to do is make this a two-parter. So tune in next time, which should be tomorrow, and what we will do is we will go over the two dashboards and we'll take a closer look at them.